Hello and welcome to the second part of our tutorial on how to use SketchUp and Velux Daylight Visualizer to make a daylight analysis. In the first part, we finished modeling the house. Now it's time to perform the daylight simulation and analysis. We will start by importing the model. Daylight Visualizer supports multiple format types including .skp files for SketchUp. Once the model is imported, we can get a quick overview of the model in the three available viewports. In the top right, we see the 3D view. Below is the section view. And the big window is used for the plan view on the left. To check if the model has been imported correctly, we will check the scale of the model. Using meters, we can click on this ruler icon to measure, let's say, a door. It measures 0.9 meters, which is correct. Then just click Apply. Moving on to the next tab, Surfaces, we are greeted with an overview of all the materials we created in SketchUp. Since we did all the hard work in SketchUp, all the materials are already assigned to their correct surfaces. This also means that all the materials, and therefore surfaces, have the correct reflectance for the daylight calculations. Looking at the windows, they also have their correct transmittance applied, 0.8 for the facade windows and 0.71 for the roof windows. Further down, in the element section, we find all the zones. Since we named these materials starting with W underscore, they are already recognized as zones in Daylight Visualizer. As you can see here, once tagged as zones, these surfaces will act as virtual planes used to specify the precise areas for daylight analysis in each room and will not interact with the light distribution. In case you didn't assign material properties in SketchUp, it is possible to assign them in Daylight Visualizer. In the next tab, we can define the location and orientation of the model. Choosing from the drop-down menu, we will click on Warsaw, Poland. Then we can start setting up the camera. Starting with the view height, we want the height to be 0.85 meters above the floor. To get the exact measurement, we must go back into SketchUp. Measuring the height from the zero point to the zone, we get a measurement of 120 centimeters, which we can then input in Daylight Visualizer. Then we must select the area of the model for which we want simulation results. Using set area, we adjust the output area to only include the building part of the model. The last tab is where we set the simulation parameters. In this tutorial, we will make a daylight analysis using the Daylight Factor Performance Indicator. Daylight Factor results are not affected by time of year and time of day settings and use default 21st of March at 12 o'clock. The resolution and render quality settings should be adjusted based on the complexity of the model. For this tutorial, we will use the medium settings. In this case, we want both the camera output and the zone output, so we will select Do Both. Then, all we have to do is click Render to start the simulation. When the simulation is finished, we can look at the results for the camera output, which is based on the plan view settings defined earlier, as well as the zones we included in the model across all floors. Note that rendering only the zone output is a way to decrease the rendering time by a considerable factor. The rendering is now done and ready for us to look at. You can save the camera output by clicking File and then choose Save Image. Besides the camera output, we also have the output of all zones, which we can save to a report or inspect one by one in the Output Viewer. When you click the Generate Report button in the Output Viewer, 
it will open a report in HTML format in your browser. You can use this report to evaluate the results for every zone we created in the SketchUp model. The very first thing you want to do is select the country where the project is located. In our case, it's Poland. This will determine the daylight factor target that you need to achieve in order to meet the requirements for the European standard EN17037 or the active house requirements. In this case, for Poland, a daylight factor target of 2% needs to be achieved for 50% or more of the work plane area in rooms commonly used for daylight activities. For example, the kitchen, dining room, living room, home office and bedrooms in a residential project. We also have a minimum daylight factor target of 0.7%, which needs to be achieved over 95% of the work plane. The report can also be used to evaluate the active house requirements, where we evaluate if the daylight factor target is achieved over 40, 50, 60 or 70% of the work plane area. The lux values stated in the brackets are derived from the median external diffuse illuminance in recorded weather file and indicate the light levels that should be available for 50% of daylight hours during the year. If we scroll down, we see all the rooms. Let's dive into one of these common rooms. A kid's room as an example. Looking at the European standard, we can look at the 50% row. Here we get a median output of 10.65% daylight factor, which equates to 1,566 lux and is way above the requirements from the European standard of 2%. This is also way higher than the higher European standard requirement of 750 lux. Scrolling down further, we can look at the kitchen as well. Here, the results are lower, but still meeting the requirements of the European standard for 50% of the work plane. we see a daylight factor of 2.95%, which equates to a lux value of 434. So, in this case, it meets the minimum level required by the European standard, which is 300 lux. This means that this lux level, 434, is estimated to be available for 50% of the daylight hours during the year for over 50% of the work plane area. Looking at the active house requirements, we fit into category one since we meet the requirement of 2% daylight factor over 70% of the work plane. Having the results for all the zones, you can go through them and check them individually. As another example, we can look at the office. Here, we see that the office does not meet the requirement taken from the European standard. When you are finished with your analysis, it's possible to write a note. This analysis was performed by Mr. X or any other note you would like to include. Then you can print it as a PDF and easily save it for documentation to send to your client. Thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope you enjoy analyzing your projects with Valix Daylight Visualizer.